Foi estátua? Foi uma estátua? Mr. Gopal Pillay, Mr. Jain Prasad, and my colleagues and friends, good afternoon to all of you. I am really grateful to Mr. Prasad as well as the, uh, my other colleagues at IDSA for inviting me to share my views or share my thoughts or whatever I understand the subject of the cyberspace and the terrorism, particularly in reference to the, the security in the Asian region or the Asia region. Friends, I don't have to impress upon about the information technology, how much benefit it has brought to every one of us, be it in the education sector, defense sector, government, or any other sector. Throughout the day, we deal with the information technology in one way or the other several times there, and we don't even realize it. Over a period of time, this sector has become so complex that if you start trying to understand its complexity, it becomes a very mind-boggling game. But one benefit it has brought to us is that we are in an interconnected world. Everything is connected together. Within the nation, the organizations are connected. Within the organization, devices are connected. We are online anytime, anywhere. And the nations are connected to other nations, to different mediums and different structures there. Very rude representation of the what is the cyber looks in a, any particular country. I put, I've tried to draw in a, in a small diagram, the green, yellow. You have ISPs, you have organizations, you have e-governance activity, you have defense activity. And similarly is the case with the other countries and they're all are connected. So information technology has brought us a global village where in a press of a, a button, we can go from one end to another end and simultaneously different, different places. We can go by our name, we can hide our name, and we are in a really virtual world. There's a benefit of the information technology. But what complexity it has brought, what new things it has brought. Today, the, as I said, cyber is a becoming an integral part of our ecosystem. We are getting new values. The new data, data sources are emerging, Internet of Things, we have the social media. In this country itself, we have half a million IoT devices, that's estimate. New apps and services are coming up. The new innovation communities are coming up, new entrepreneurships are coming up. And they're all becoming a part of the ecosystem. A lot of data is being generated. A lot of different technologies are coming together and merging together. And what the value we are extracting from this, the new form of the application is the data. And it's multiplying, multiplying the data. The new application and more than that, new expertise is coming. The new entrepreneurial model is coming and there's a new different form of wealth creation is coming up there and everything is becoming a integral part of our ecosystem. 
there are a couple of technologies which are the underlying technologies in the cyber world. One is the internet, which everybody knows it. Without internet, I don't think we would have a seamless connectivity. <coughs> Encryption, that is a new thing which has come up for the last more than a decade. And today we are in an era where we have end-to-end -end encryption. We discuss, we try to send message from mobile phone to the next, the uh, recipient mobile phone, end-to-end -end is encryption there. And one of the very clear example which all of us knows, WhatsApp. We will discuss other example, but that's underlying technology in all the cyber world which we are talking about, virtual reality. Social media, today it has become a, almost a must. Every organization wants to connect to the social media. Every youth wants to get to the social media. Everyone is eager to publicize or give in to his feelings to the social media. Robotics, how the robotics are penetrating into our commercial as well as professional sector, artificial intelligence. And this is part of every technology what we are talking about. And the last one, the addition is a nanotechnology. Now these technologies has a triple kind of a edge. We can use it for the benefit of the people. We can use it for the benefit of the organizations. And we can use it for the purpose which is not desirable. It is used by citizens and the government to deliver services in a secure manner or a more effective manner through all those technologies. Used by the police intelligence as well as security agencies. The entire social media is also monitored by the police to monitor the, to look at the incident, to scan the incidents, what is happening, which area what is happening. They can really see where the jams are there or where the people have put the FIRs there or whatever any demonstration any all kind of thing that can be monitored from here. The activities of the adversary groups are monitored by the security intelligence agencies by military defense purposes UAV GPS all those technologies are used by the military and finally by the terrorist as well as the adversaries for monitoring the activity of the first four which I have listed out. So it is a kind of a, a multiple edged technology which can be used for different purposes depending upon what purpose we need to do that. This aspect of the multiple edge is also has been exploited as I said in the last not only by terrorists but other adversaries also. Today we are in a stage, we started about 20 years, we are in a stage where, where we were in an intrusive stage. You insert someone, deface the websites, post your message, that's all. It's, we were more in a static world. We moved into the a disruptive world where you try to disrupt the entire functioning of the systems. Denial of service attack where you attack from a remote place and jam the entire infrastructure. We introduce the, a software script called a ransomware which we click it and completely encrypt your information in your system whether it is a mobile or a desktop system. And But now we are moving to the stage which is a damaging structure. We have seen the case, we have heard the case about how the Ukrainian power grid was damaged in the last week of December 2016 it took almost couple of months four months for them to put the system on and spending a huge amount of money. In the October 2016 also one third of the western coast in the US was shut down just because someone started sending things to the baby monitor and it made a huge kind of a damage there. So we have moved from intrusive stage to the destructive stage and we are now in the damaging stage which 
This shows the potential of the cyber and the information technology, the multifaceted Over a period of time, we have moved from the hacking, as I said, simple static kind of thing, cyber crime, cyber espionage, and today we are in the cyber warfare stage. And this warfare, this technology has a unique kind of a feature, used by the nation, used by the industry, used by the organizations to create a problem to other organizations and used by the terrorists and adversaries and the nation to create problem for the other countries also. Every incident what we face today is a part of the cyber warfare. Many incident we can look at it, many, any incident you listed what internationally happens there within, within our own country, the case is a warfare, multiple technologies were involved multiple targets were there, huge data was impacted and larger population was impacted one way or the other. While we all know about the good part of the information technology and cyber which we see, but the, today's focus is more on the impact of cyber on the terrorism, how it is helping the terrorist, how it is helping the terror ter terrorism and how effectively they are using. The entire cyber technology, information technology is not being developed exclusively by the terrorist group or the adversary groups for themselves. They may be developing little bit, but largely they are also following the same model fund the project in the premium universities or premium organization, get the technology developed or use the technology which is already there for their purposes. That's a normal trend is there and I will deal with how the trend has changed. So we, we have to distinguish between two parts. One is the committing terrorism using cyberspace and other is the terrorism on the cyberspace. There are two, both are different aspects. When we talk about the terrorism using cyberspace, we talk about a group of people using cyberspace for committing crimes or committing terrorism and we see the lone wolves there. Both are there. If you look at 9-11, there are about 19-20 people, a group of 19-20 people who committed that kind of a heroinous crime but today that kind of a thing or maybe smaller part is also committed by a lone wolf. Those are they undergo the training through the websites, radicalize themselves and try to implement it. The famous case of a two brothers in a Boston they created the bomb in a pressure cooker by learning on the website. It's a case of a lone wolf. Like this many cases will be seen but ultimately they have a touch with the cyber part where they learn how to commit terrorism, how to design the tool which can impact. That's one aspect. Narrowcasting. Today the cyber part enables to focus on a particular section of the society. I remember in 2015 December, we got a request from the law enforcement agency in, in India to, with a court order to block certain 32 websites. And those 32 websites were, some of them were quite prestigious, very branded websites, very popular websites there and one of them was a famous dictionary site. We had to, there was a court order, we had to block the websites, but then whole lot of a chaos happened there. The media came forward and they say, why the prestigious website like a dictionary website is blocked. But 
what we saw, what we uh, look at, we looked at the thing. On the famous dictionary site, there will be a advertisement going on. It will appear, it will disappear. You click the web, the, that particular advertisement, it will take you to another website. It will take you to the third website. And that's where they were narrowcasting it, focusing on certain audience there. The paste bin website, you post a message, it will get automatically removed after some time, so you don't find it. They become very difficult in the court of law to prove that this website is a offending website. So today the technology permit, and you can one can create, one can commit terrorism in a narrow casting manner, focusing on a particular section, particular society. The new media, passive use of unsophisticated websites, I said paste bin, daily motion, and many websites I can talk about in, in a static manner. Interactive platform, and then the social media, three major new media, but there is a change of direct, the change, how the terrorism has changed with this, these three. A group like Al-Qaeda were using more of the unsophisticated website, posting the image and changing it after some time. But when you look at the ISIS, they are more on the social media, using the sophisticated tool on the social media and committing whatever the messaging, training, communication, everything is through the social media and through the interactive platforms. So new media has happened and for the committing the uh, terrorism and the terrorism on the cyberspace. Denial of service attack, we want to access a railway website or an airline website, they attack the website so that we are not able to get to the airline website, we are not able to book a ticket. We have to pay our taxes, we have to get money, internet banking, the bank site will be attacked and the bank site will not be visible. And the attacks are very, very high in, a, in, in terms of intensity. It, it is again a single wall case and they commit to come together and start attacking from different parts of the world. This is one of the very predominant uh, way of terrorism on the cyberspace. Ransomware. Last three months, the maximum cases were in the worldwide, not only in India, worldwide, ransomware. You de deliver the ransomware to the spam mail, to the phishing mail, to send an email, click it, and your entire data is encrypted, and then you got a phone call or you got a mail that kindly give this money if you want to retrieve this information. And it become a very sophisticated, a big racket going on worldwide. Corrupting software. Again, sending to spam mail, corrupt the entire system, damage the entire system, data is wiped out, and you start looking at a plan. Critical infrastructure. I have mentioned the case of the Ukraine power grid, and there are, there are many cases where the critical information infrastructure was attacked using the cyber means from remotely or inside. Traffic hijacking. We are sending a trip mail, we are sending the web traffic throughout the day, certain parts of the traffic is hijacked and routed through some different means and come back to that. The latency may change, the response may change by a few seconds or by a few minutes and at times we, we think that the internet has become slow, we ignore it. But actually the traffic hijacking comes up with the data is extracted. Darknets. Darknets are the websites which are not publicized in a, in a manner which other websites are publicized. You need a special software to open the websites and read the messages there. It's a web. Then the TOR the origin router where it, a group of proxies will be there and, and the very crude example of proxy I'll give a EPBX there. 
a group of proxies will be there where the entire traffic will be encrypted it goes from one source to another source from another to another one so that it becomes difficult at the end of the day when it the at the input stage at the exit stage it's difficult to link it there investigative agency find it very very difficult to correlate or attribute it <coughs> and the these <coughs> these techniques are also used for the first part for creating the terrorism using the cyberspace how terrorist actors are using these methods end to end encryption whatsapp is one of the example telegram a social media websites is another example which is end to end encrypted now telegram offer the facility the message goes away after a certain time the center the server chat server keeps on changing from one location to another location it becomes very difficult to locate the server for the agencies there wicker pgps now pgp keys are used for authenticating the messages there but what pgp keys top of the pgp keys is like a like a digital your signature digital signature but top of this they are using the encrypted software which entire encrypts it there is a commercial software apple i messages there they are all encrypted and we have seen the case of fbi where it is stated they paid 1 million dollar to some private party to break open the i messages of a one terrorist whatsapp i mentioned these are end to end encryption techniques are used full device encryption microsoft product windows we see in the computer system they use the bit locker technique there inside whatever goes in the browser it gets encrypted and we find very difficult to decrypt it practically it is impossible to break the bit locker without the help of the company and the company is not willing to provide the technology file vault to put the system they put the information difficult to come out lux this is a another form attachment to the linux operating system to make it completely secure from the point of your hacking or point of your breaking or cyber forensic to crypt send the data and encrypt the signals there and the last one the now the buzz world is the tpm chips you have a semiconductor chip you use it you hide the keys you hide the encryption there algorithm on the chips and hide the put the back doors on the chip and get the data so these are the techniques which are being used by the terrorist for their activities for pursuing their activity proxy servers i have mentioned the or dark web i have mentioned then the opsoc methods there we have seen how the paris attacks they used the burner phone burner phone is a prepaid mobile phones in a mobile phone you take a sim you can create 10 more numbers there imei is is snoop smoofed so it become they do one transaction and the phone is damaged and is very difficult to find out to trace the entire evidence there self destruction messages they put the software into the system and the message get self destructed after some time or wherever the message goes also it gets uh, destructed after some time window washer mobile phone install the software window washer it will completely wash away it will completely remove the entire data rewrite the data remove the data so that one is not able to get a trace of what is there in the mobile phone web browser the entire history whatever we access is in the web of our computer systems this are web browser washer where everything is washed away after the transaction is committed 
just to summarize, the, there are 11 points which are now, which we see. Number one, the complexity of the cyber use is increasing. Attacks and terrorism are on rise. Denial of service is becoming a almost a de facto every day organized some of the organizations facing the denial of service. Nobody can say they are not facing any commercial large organization is facing the denial of service. The threat it becoming the threat vectors are changing, they are becoming more and more complex. With the addition of more and more devices on the net, the entire paradigm there is a shift paradigm shift and things are becoming more and more complex and broader in scope. The terrorists are quickly evolving themselves, adapting and accelerating. Them. As I said, they are also funding technology, but largely the terrorists today are using the same technology which is developed, which any other person used for the beneficial purposes. The cyber offense by non-state actors and then the state actor is affecting everyone. In fact, the state actors and the non-state actor at times are joining hand together to commit the crime or commit the terrorism. The Bangladesh case, which was, which happened last year in February, is a clear-cut example where the non-state actor and the state actors were combined together. More than 70% traffic on the internet is encrypted and difficult to break it. The threat detection would require collection and deeper analysis of data. Data is need to be collected, data need to be exchanged and need to be put to investigation. The life safety and the cyber security intersect in products. The rise of cyber litigation the realistic cost of cyber security are better understood. There is a more awareness there. But the technology changing so fast, innovations are taking so fast, the one gets puzzled how to secure my data, how to secure information, or the device being to, uh, I mean, disallows misuse remotely or locally. At the end, the government role is expanding there. The police powers, as we are becoming moving towards a more and more maturity, the police powers, security agency powers are also increasing. That's a direct is one of the impact of the cyber, and finally the government role is extending. Therefore, the today's challenge is the encrypted traffic, how to resolve the traffic, how to monitor the traffic so that we can detect the terrorist and reverse activities. Data residing on servers abroad. The Googles or the Facebook or the Twitter, they are not operating from only one country. They are operating from more than 40 countries. At any point of a time, if we try to block the data comes from some other place there. The way the data is residing is becoming an issue and that is more getting in the, in the environment of a cloud. We are talking about cloud. This is becoming a, a more difficult issue with the data is residing multiple jurisdiction, collection of evidence that is a challenge today, exchange of information. All we in a bilateral, multilateral we talk about exchange information is the, the first cooperation every country wants to agree but when it comes to the exchange of information there is hardly any exchange of information. We need to go back to the mutual legal assistance treaty regime and try to get the data which was actually meant for the physical those those physical era today the using those MLATs for the taking the cyber data is a uh, meaningless thing. Capacity development skill upgradation while the adversaries and terrorists are able to create the capacity development using the website, there are special modules are there, but for our law enforcement agencies, for security agencies, it's becoming a challenge. What's our response? The physical world and the cyber world, they are totally two different 
paradigms and para different ages are there. We need a wider collaboration to understand the incidents, understand how the things have happened. And in that, collaboration is needed to identify the hidden servers, identify the proxy servers from where the data is flowing there because world over in a country like India, the almost 40% traffic is flowing on the dark nets and through TOS and similar must be the figure worldwide also. Public-private cooperation there because the private is equally participating in terms of installing infrastructure but the government infrastructure. And I must say that the normal communication and the internet communication, the two different models are also there. And the internet is largely managed by the public, used by the private, where the normal communication is installed by the private and used by the public. There's a two other different models. So we need, in this case, we need a public-private partnership more than what we have seen in the physical world. International legal framework, Budapest Convention. Every country has their own laws. We have also Indian the uh, Indian Penal Code. We have Information Technology Act, and like every country has, and first of the international convention was the Budapest Convention. But does it answer the cyber terrorism? Certainly, it is not. Privacy framework. In the words of social media, what is the meaning of a privacy? Every country has the meaning of privacy with respect to its own cultural values. But since we are operating in a global village, we need to have a uniform privacy network. That privacy policy will, will help us to decide creating a balance between security and privacy too. Balance between civil liberties and the securities. How much monitoring is to be done of the net? What kind of a monitoring is to be done? civil liberties as, and, and security, they need to have a balance. And we need to have more activist approach toward the terrorism. There are many forums which are discussing the cyber norms. UNGG currently is going on. The last session is going to happen in June, June 2017. They're discussing the norms, but with these norms are largely of the nature of voluntary norms. Cyber terrorism is still not part of that norms there. Whatever discussion happens, they say bilateral forum is the best forum where you can discuss those norms and multilateral forums are not being allowed to use this terrorism norms there. SCO, Shanghai Cooperation. That's another forum which is discussing the cyber norms. Then the OSCE, Organization Security Cooperation in Europe there. They have also their norms. But these all these organizations, the, the norms are prepared, but they are not a compatible to each other norm. There. They have a different value, different proposition, different understanding, and none of them is talking about the kind of terrorism. New weapons like we need to have a sophisticated awareness techniques how to create the education awareness to deal with those websites or to deal with those cases which we see. And the last one is the enforcement of the in, and the prosecution of the offenders, which that, that becomes a challenge. We have a global instrument. The first instrument was the global counter terrorism strategy which was adopted by the General Assembly in, by our UN in September 2006. It lays down the responsibilities on the part of the member countries. Then the UN Security Council resolution there, 1624, again in 2005, report of the Secretary General of UN on the counter-terrorism, the UN Working Group on the counter on, on the on the counter-terrorism, the use of internet for internet for the terrorist purposes. But in spite of all these reports, 
have we defined what is terrorist and what is terrorist act particularly in the cyber space we can have di- different definition we have many definitions which do provide some light on the terrorist and terrorist act talk about the physical world but in the cyber world we still need to evolve and discuss what is the terrorism and terrorism act do we need another geneva convention to discuss all the aspects or the challenges which cyber world is posing before us in terms of jurisdiction in terms of jurisprudence in terms of handling evidence in terms of exchanging evidence do we need this is where and the ungg report the last session no consensus has appeared which finished last friday no consensus has come up on this issues which we am which i presented before before all of you i thank you very much for patient hearing but the time has come that we should thoroughly debate these issues because of the how the cyber is embedded into every activity our day to day life no terrorism act will happen without the involvement of the cyber I once again thanks IDSA for giving me opportunity to share my views thank you